Great news, folks. The anti-gun movement in America is in huge trouble. And guess what? They know it. Not only do they know it, they're actually admitting that they're in trouble. In fact, some are even saying that the war over guns is lost. Well, I'm not going to be that complacent in how I respond to this, but I want to give you the great news from some major sources that are traditionally anti-gun in America, and they're conceding the fact that the Second Amendment of the right to keep bear arms is winning and has won in the United States. Stay tuned. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box of Diner, proud American governor and constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to The Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. Show your love for Frederick Douglass and The Four Boxes of American Liberty. Okay, folks, huge news, exciting news. I want to talk a little bit about two major articles that just came out from traditionally anti-gun sources as I see it, and they both are essentially saying that the war on guns is over. Now, I don't believe them because the anti-gunners are always out there trying to test the weaknesses of our fences. They're trying to find weak Republicans, rhinos and the like, to take away our gun rights. But I take solace and some happiness from the fact that there's some major sources out there that are basically saying that the war on guns appears to be lost and the Second Amendment community, that would be us, have won. Specifically, I'm going to talk about two different articles that I will link to down below. One from the Los Angeles Times and one from the New Republic, a prominent liberal newspaper, or magazine really, uh, going all the way back many decades. Both have acknowledged that the anti-gun movement in the United States is in huge trouble and may, frankly, as a, for all intents and purposes, may have already lost the fight about guns. Let's start with the Los Angeles Times. So Erica Smith is a writer for the Los Angeles Times. She writes about politics and, quote, how to make, I'm going to try to get this right, and how to make uh, create a more equitable California. So I think with language like this, we know kind of where uh, the journalist Erica Smith generally is at politically. Uh, but in her article, she writes, quote, it's just as a column, she says, quote, Trump and the NRA might be right about guns, and, the, and we mostly have ourselves to blame. And in this article, which I'll link to down below, she goes through the fact that, well, you know, we're really winning on guns. Specifically, among the other things, she references the fact that there are 20 sec 26 permitless carry states. She says 25, but she obviously means 26 because we now have Florida. That includes states like Florida and Texas, two of the largest states in the country. Um, also, realistically, we know that uh, NYSERPA versus Bruin, the Supreme Court looks very good to, for us on the Second Amendment, just respecting the Second Amendment as it was written and understood at the time of our founding, which is that we have a fundamental right to keep and bear arms no different than we have a fundamental right to speak our mind on issues about politics and the like. Beyond that, of course, at the federal level, we have uh, Republicans in control of the House, uh, basically preventing, if they hold together, which they should, any type of federal gun control legislation. So all of this is very good news when it comes to our right to keep and bear arms and the you know, columnists like Erica Smith at the Los Angeles Times are acknowledging this. Specifically, what she talks about here is how that historically the pro-gun movement would talk about how you need a gun to defend yourself against crime. And she goes on to say that even though when you do all this polling, people say they want more gun control of the law, the reality is uh, that the NRA's agenda, even though it may or may not be because of the NRA, she says, she says maybe it's not because of the NRA, but the American public supports the notion that you need to have guns to protect yourself against evil and other people with guns. She goes on to talk about how uh, realistically, um, even though Donald Trump may be losing some of his comments about being pro-gun are fair. And she goes on to say that she doesn't think that guns are winning in the United States because of the NRA or, or, or Donald Trump. She goes on to say that maybe it is in fact because there's a rise in crime in parts of the United States. Erica Smith says that over the last three years has been a very profitable time uh, for the modern gun industry and gun manufacturers. She goes on to say that it goes back to the COVID time of 2020, there was widespread unease over the pandemic and you had all sorts of new owners going out there buying guns. And I'm not surprised because the pandemic taught us one thing, that at the end of the day, not only are you your own first responder, but you are really dependent upon 
yourself, to protect yourself and your family and your community, uh, government ain't going to be there. And we saw that in many of the riots in 2020 in places like Kenosha, where um, really, you know, even if law enforcement was there, they didn't seem to be doing a, an effective job protecting a lot of Americans from the abuses of the criminal class. Beyond that, Erica Smith talks uh, about, and what's interesting is you know that from that video I did a couple days ago about why I thought that Kaiser Family Foundation, KFF, uh, survey was actually very favorable to the gun owners, even though uh, the NBC news story about it uh, tried to spin it as an anti-gun story. But in many respects, it was pro-gun if you actually looked at the data of the study. And actually, Erica Smith, who's no relation to me, by the way, uh, she actually refers to that study in her article here for the Los Angeles Times. She says that almost 30 percent of Americans have purchased a gun to protect themselves or their families from gun violence, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. She also goes on to say that 40 percent of Americans have taken a gun safe course or practice shooting and she says she's met many of these people who've done that in Los Angeles which is not considered to be necessarily NRA territory obviously or uh, pro-gun territory but they're all buying guns because they feel the need to protect themselves and they don't trust government I'm guessing because who can trust government to protect yourself there's too many instances where you know people are getting killed and government uh, can't protect them the police can't get there in time even if they try and of course we have situations like Uvalde where even if you have 400 police officers outside the school uh, they're still not able to stop the mass shooter in any kind of a timely way so all this is teaching Americans that again what I've said for many years and many of you have said out there you are your own first responder whether you like like it or not. But what's interesting about Erica Smith's article is she actually admits that it's not the NRA or Donald Trump. She says, quote, we were under no obligation, as Americans presumably, we were under no obligation to follow the NRA's grand plan. Lapierre, I mean Wayne Lapierre, did not force us to buy more guns. Republicans did not make people start carrying sidearms to the mall like we're sidling up to a bar in the old in an old western close quote that's what she writes here and this is exactly what i've been saying that the anti-gun movement keeps trying to say that the gun industry is marketing and spending money trying to persuade people to buy guns but it's not the gun industry because we know repeatedly whether it be hollywood blockbuster movies that failed whether it be new coke whether it be cnn plus or whether it be a massive marketing budget by budweiser that we're now seeing the reality is people decide what they want to buy, and that's what drives markets. Sure, suppliers can provide marketing information, but you know the old saying, and I know this from my days you know, as a lawyer on Wall Street, the old saying was, great marketing will make a bad product fail faster. So again, if it's a product that people don't want, they're not going to buy it no matter how much money is spent on marketing. And that's what the anti-gunners refuse to acknowledge because they keep saying that the gun industry spends money on marketing. And the reality is it doesn't matter if they spend any money on marketing, people are still gonna wanna buy guns because among other things, it's their second amendment right to keep their arms. People have not forgotten that. And people want guns to protect themselves and their family and for all sorts of other lawful reasons. The last point I wanna make from Erica Smith before I get to the, the, the New Republic article is she's, she quotes somebody saying, we are beyond trying to get guns off the street. There are just too many of them out there. All you can do is to be prepared to protect yourself and be aware of your surroundings. Well, I don't think that's exactly a new phenomenon. What's happening, I think, is that the anti-gun movement in America, liberal America, is starting to realize that when we say you are your own first responder, you got to protect yourself, what's your plan if evil knocks at your door? I think the left in America is at least starting to understand it because they lived through the pandemic. They, they saw what happened in 2020 themselves, and now they're the victims of crime in places like New York City and Chicago. Uh, and I think that is the hardcore reality because the old saying, of course, is that a, uh, a conservative is a liberal who has been mugged. And I think that we're seeing a lot of that now where liberals are realizing they're living in dangerous times and dangerous places and they want to protect themselves and need to protect themselves because the police will not be there. Now, I want to continue on to talk about this New Republic article. The New Republic is a very prominent publication for the left, uh, has been for literally decades. Uh, this is the title of their article they just published. I think a lot of these articles came out because in conjunction with the NRA convention in Indianapolis last week. Uh, this is the title of the article, Hopeless, The Grim Truth, The War on Guns is Lost. That's the title of the article in the New Republic. That is literally like the left-wing version of the National Review, if you want to draw an analogy there. This is what the article says. A guy by uh, Brian Tannehill wrote this article. The subheading is, quote, there are more unregistered guns, of course, that's a no-brainer. We don't have, really have gun registrations in most of America, nor should we, nor is it probably constitutional. But set that issue aside. Quote, there are more unregistered guns 
in this country than are possessed by the Pentagon, Department of Homeland Security, and police departments combined, and Republicans want more of them. I'm not sure Republicans want more of them. They probably do. I think American gun owners want more of them, and I think Americans want more of them because, again, you are your own first responder, and, uh, well, guns is uh, the great equalizer if you're bumping up against these sort of terrorist, evil, criminal threats that we see uh, here in the United States coming across our border from the south in the form of cartels, whether it be terrorists coming across, you know, maybe even flying into our airports like we saw with the Sarnoff brothers in the Boston uh, Marathon bombing, and of course common everyday street criminals that we see in places like New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles, not to mention all the mentally mentally ill psychopath nut jobs that we won't put in institutions because, uh, well, for a whole host of reasons, we want to mainstream them. And they're out on our streets as psychopaths, which means not only are they crazy, they're also violent. And they're out on our streets walking the exact same streets that we walk. Note that, of course, the police walk around with AR-15s to protect themselves against these various elements of danger. And somehow people in the anti-gun movement want to deny us that ability to walk the same streets with those same weapons as the police have to walk. But again, the great news is that the New Republic literally entitled their, their, their article, The War on Guns is Lost. He goes on to talk a lot about the sort of things that we've talked about on this channel, all the different ways that we can thwart them from taking our rights. It's not just the Second Amendment. It's not just the courts, such as uh, the U.S. Supreme Court in Nyserpa versus Bruin and all the courts that are following the decision of Nyserpa versus Bruin. It's also the fact that we have Republicans in the House. In two years, we, should take, we the Republicans, should take over the Senate. Uh, anything's possible. Republicans are certainly notorious for screwing stuff up. Nevertheless, they should be able to take over the Senate in a very favorable cycle. Who knows what's going to happen in the White House? And we have federalism in the structural constitution. There's a lot of things, such as the filibuster, that can prevent gun control from being enacted. And again, gun control is really a propaganda term for stealing our fundamental constitutional rights as guaranteed by the Second Amendment. Remember, the Second Amendment does not create our rights. It simply guarantees pre-existing rights. That's not Mark Smith talking. That's what the U.S. Supreme Court literally has said on multiple occasions, including in Heller. So to summarize this article by the New Republic, this is the final comment from the article itself, quote, the truth hurts when it means changing your whole world view that the war is lost and your country cannot be saved from not only what it has become, but what it chooses to be. Clear, very close quote. Now that may be powerful, flowery, flowery language to the anti-gun people that read the New Republic, I have a different take on it. I think you cannot take guns from Americans because it is our God-given fundamental right that is preserved in various forms, including but not limited to the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, not to mention that most states have a right to keep and bear arms. And the fact is there's over 400 million guns in the United States already, and we have all sorts of other checks and balances federalism, the structural constitution, and so on and so on, that will allow us to protect this fundamental human right as memorialized as a fundamental American right in the text of the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. Okay, folks, hope you learned a little bit something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again soon at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.